relief and provided with rains therein. The king said, Bring him to me. When the messenger came to him, he said, Go back to your master and ask him about the affair of women who cut their hands. My lord is indeed well aware of their stratagems. The king said, What was your business, women, when you solicited Joseph? They said, Heaven be praised. We know of no evil in him. The prince's wife said, Now the truth has come to light. It was I who solicited him, and he is indeed telling the truth. Joseph said, I initiated this inquiry, that he may know that I did not betray him in his absence, and that Allah does not further the schemes of the treacherous. Yet I do not absolve my own carnal soul, for the carnal soul indeed prompts men to evil, except inasmuch as my Lord has mercy. Indeed my Lord is all-forgiving, all-merciful. The king said, Bring him to me, I will make him my favorite. Then when he had spoken with him, he said, Indeed today onwards you will be honored and trustworthy with us. He said, Put me in charge of the country's granaries. I am indeed fastidious and well informed. That is how we established Joseph in the land, that he may settle in it wherever he wished. We confer our mercy on whomever we wish, and we do not waste the reward of the virtuous. And the reward of the hereafter is surely better for those who have faith and are God-weary. After some years, the brothers of Joseph came and entered his presence. He recognized them, but they did not recognize him. When he had furnished them with their provision, he said, Bring me a brother that you have through your father. Do you not see that I give the full measure and that I am the best of hosts? But if you do not bring him to me, then there will be no rations for you with me, and don't ever come near me. They said, We will solicit him from his father, that we will surely do. He said to his servants, Put their money in their saddlebags, maybe they will recognize it, when they return to their folks, and maybe they will come back again. So when they returned to their father, they said, Father, the measure has been withheld from us, so let our brother go with us, so that we may obtain the measure, and we will indeed take good care of him. He said, Should I trust you with him just as I trusted you with his brother before? Yet Allah is the best of protectors, and he is the most merciful of merciful ones. And when they opened their baggage, they found their money restored to them. They said, Father, what more do we want? This is our money restored to us. We will get provisions for our family and take care of our brother and add another camel load of rations. These are meager rations. He said, I will not let him go with you until you give me a solemn pledge by Allah that you will surely bring him back to me, unless you are made to perish. When they had given him their solemn pledge, he said, Allah is witness over what we say. And he said, My sons, do not enter by one gate, but enter by separate gates, though I cannot avail you anything against Allah. Sovereignty belongs only to Allah. In him I have put my trust, and in him let all the trusting put their trust. When they entered whence their father had bidden them, it did not avail them anything against Allah, but only fulfilled a wish in Jacob's heart. Indeed, he had the knowledge of what we had taught him, but most people did not know. And when they entered into the presence of Joseph, he set his brother close to himself and said, Indeed, I am your brother, so do not sorrow for what they used to do. When he had furnished them with their provision, he put the drinking cup into his brother's saddlebag. Then Harold shouted, O men of the caravan, you are indeed thieves. They said as they turned towards them, What are you missing? They said, We miss the king's goblet. Whoever brings it shall have a camel load of grain, said the steward. I will guarantee that. They said, By Allah, you certainly know that we did not come to make trouble in this country, and we are not thieves. They said, What shall be its requital if he prove to be lying? They said, The requital for it shall be, that he in whose saddlebag it is found shall give himself over as its requital. Thus do we requite the wrongdoers. Then he began with their sacks, before opening his brother's sack. Then he took it out from his brother's sack. 
thus did we devise for Joseph's sake. He could not have held his brother under the king's law unless Allah willed otherwise. We raise and rank whomever we please, and above every man of knowledge is one who knows best. They said, If he has stolen, there is no wonder a brother of his had stolen before. Thereupon Joseph kept the matter to himself, and he did not disclose it to them. He said, Your are in a worse state, and Allah knows best what you allege. They said, O Amir, indeed he has a father, a very old man, so take one of us in his place. Indeed we see that you are a virtuous man. He said, God forbid that we should take anyone except him with whom we found our wares, for then we would indeed be wrongdoers. When they had despaired of moving him, they withdrew to confer privately. The eldest of them said, Don't you know that your father has taken a solemn pledge from you by Allah? And earlier you have neglected your duty in regard to Joseph? So I will never leave this land until my father permits me or Allah passes a judgment for me, and he is the best of judges. Go back to your father and say, Father, your son has indeed committed a theft, and we testified only to what we knew, and we could not have forestalled the unseen. Ask the people of the town we were in, and the caravan with which we came, we indeed speak the truth. He said, Rather your souls have made a matter seem decorous to you, yet patience is graceful. Maybe Allah will bring them all back to me. Indeed, he is the all-knowing, the all-wise. And he turned away from them and said, Alas for Joseph! His eyes had turned white with grief, and he choked with suppressed agony. They said, By Allah, you will go on remembering Joseph until you wreck your health or perish. He said, I complain of my anguish and grief only to Allah. I know from Allah what you do not know. Go, my sons, and look for Joseph and his brother, and do not despair of Allah's mercy. Indeed, no one despairs of Allah's mercy except the faithless lot. Then, when they entered into his presence, they said, O Amir, distress has befallen our family and us, and we have brought just a meager sum. Yet grant us the full measure, and be charitable to us. Indeed, Allah rewards the charitable. He said, Have you realized what you did to Joseph and his brother when you were senseless? They said, Are you really Joseph? He said, I am Joseph, and this is my brother. Certainly Allah has shown us favor. Indeed, if one is God-weary and patient, Allah does not waste the reward of the virtuous. They said, By Allah, Allah has certainly preferred you over us, and we have indeed been erring. He said, There shall be no reproach on you today. Allah will forgive you, and he is the most merciful of the merciful. Take this shirt of mine and cast it upon my father's face. He will regain his sight and bring me all your folks. As the caravan set off, their father said, I sense the scent of Joseph if you will not consider me a dotard. They said, By God, you persist in your inveterate error. When the bearer of good news arrived, he cast it on his face, and he regained his sight. He said, Did I not tell you, I know from Allah what you do not know? They said, Father, plead with Allah for forgiveness of our sins. We have indeed been erring. He said, I shall plead with my Lord to forgive you. Indeed, he is the all-forgiving the all-merciful. When they entered into the presence of Joseph, he set his parents close to himself and said, Welcome to Egypt in safety, God willing. And he seated his parents high upon the throne, and they fell down prostrate before him. He said, Father, this is the fulfillment of my dream of long ago, which my Lord has made come true. He was certainly gracious to me when he brought me out of the prison and brought you over from the desert. After that, Satan had incited ill feeling between me and my brothers. Indeed, my Lord is all attentive in bringing about what he wishes. Indeed, he is the all-knowing, the all-wise. My Lord, you have granted me a share in the kingdom and taught me the interpretation of dreams, originator of the heavens and earth. You are my guardian in this world and the hereafter. Let my death be in submission to you and unite me with the righteous. These are accounts of the unseen which we reveal to you, and you were not with them when they conspired together 